الله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفوته من خلقه وحبيبه قد بلغ رسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وأدى ما كلفه الله به حتى أتاه اليقين فاللهم اجزه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جازيت به نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحينا على سنته وآمتنا على ملته واحشرنا تحت لوائه وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا أما بعد In the past couple of weeks we have been tracking some ayat from Surah Ash-Shura to give us some focus about one of the purposes of the Qur'an. One of the major purposes of the Qur'an is to plan and dig and pave a special path for humanity. Path in the Arabic word could be called tariq, it could be road, it could be way, it could be a methodology, it could be a direction, it could be a sharia from shara'a. So last time we explained ayah number 13 from surah uh, ash-shura in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started off this ayah by the word shara'a. He established a path for you. The word sharia comes from the root word shara'a. You know when you dig a path and you tell your kids this is the line you want to walk. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in explaining the ayah in Surah Al-An'am where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَرَّقُوا دِينَهُمْ No, وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ And this path of mine is a straight path. Follow it. وَأَنَّ هَذَا صراط مستقيم وأن هذا صراط مستقيم فاتبعوه follow it ولا تتبعوا السبل فتفرق بكم عن سبيله there is no turning from the time you are aware of what this life is by the time you reach puberty or teenage you are mukallaf, you are ready to receive the guidance and ready to implement it in your life. Do you know how the Prophet ﷺ explained this ayah to his companions? The Prophet ﷺ, he took a stick or a branch of a tree and he drew a line, a straight line in the sand and then he drew other branches out of this line and he read this is the path of Allah it is a straight path don't you turn away from it lest you become divided in direction in heart and in unity this is an amazing illustration of how we should understand and look at the Qur'an. The Qur'an is not just giving us direction. The Qur'an is giving us life. Real life. If you want to understand the Qur'an and you read the Qur'an and you try to implement the Qur'an, 
you have to learn what the Quran is saying as a text and what implications the text is carrying to you and what direction the text wants you to go what goal you should adapt what lifestyle even what friends and what spouse you should be picking for your journey as much as this sounds like maybe overwhelming for some people but it's one of two choices either you follow his direction or you follow your own views so those who believe like us Muslims that Allah has the ultimate knowledge and the ultimate wisdom how could they choose a path other than his path the path he drew for us how could they follow a law other than the law he has given us how could they take for a judge anyone other than him the only neutral one is Allah all else have biases feelings inclinations and so on and so forth so nobody could have rendered absolute clear guidance absolute fair and just judgments but him and he did all of his wisdom that he wanted to teach us he revealed it in the Quran all the knowledge we need to get to paradise is in the Quran so now we understand that when Allah says Shara'a lakum min ad-deen ma wassa bihi nuha wallazi awhayna ilayk Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has crafted a path and he says for you shara'a lakum of course the discussion here is addressing the entire humanity that's why it brings Nuh and Ibrahim and others so the point here is that this path is meant for humanity but definitely at least those who believe in the Quran should take this path seriously and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةِ أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ let them be warned those who follow a path other than his path that they may be subject to tribulations and trials and tests which means difficulties pestilence calamities and the entire human race sees on display from time to time what could have never been seen in the past like when a punishment comes it comes to a village a town a neighborhood and because there was no social media or TV or live camera or internet maybe a next door village wouldn't know until they get to visit or somebody comes to visit them if anyone survives but now those punishments are on display almost on daily basis how come humanity is not heeding those warnings on clear display every day almost every day something is happening call it global warming call it anything else but those disasters are not random because everything in this universe is under his absolute control he did not create the universe and then left it for us to manage he entrusted us to manage what we have control over right we don't have control over managing winds or clouds or floods or heavy rains or heat and we have no control so this is our these are his 
but unfortunately some people call it nature as if nature made itself nature is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran is is full of text telling us who created the heavens who created the earth who created the mountains who controls the clouds in the sky and the water that comes and how much water gets dropped somewhere and other places where it becomes dry and other places where earthquakes erupt and volcanoes erupt Th these are not haphazard events we trigger those punishing creations of Allah we prompt it by our own choices and actions as communities Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَى آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا If the people of the villages were to submit to Allah, to believe in Allah, to be mindful of Allah, we would have opened the gates of mercy from heavens and from the earth. What do we get from the earth? We get all what we need. We have been getting everything from the earth. Right? Even the water that we drink coming from above is also evaporating from the earth and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes it in a process to come where He wants, as much as He wants. And Allah speaks about thunderbolts, lightning, saying that it is he who would keep it away from somebody and afflicts it to somebody else. فيصرف فيصيب به من يشاء ويصرفه عما يشاء. So who is in control? He directs it where he wants, where he wills, and he directs it away from whom he wills. So it's all up to him. We know and we might have seen pictures, I saw myself, pictures of tornadoes ravaging the Midwest. It is a 40 minute tracing of a very strong tornado in Oklahoma by CNN reporter who happens to be in his copter flying and he traced the tornado. The tornado was meticulously choosing which place to destroy completely, which building to destroy partially, and which buildings are saved. Amazing. It's, it's a line of wind coming from heaven, from the sky, and it chooses, it turns around buildings that are not meant to be destroyed. This is a vivid, clear picture. People in the past would not see this because those are not known in the Middle East. So, with seeing all of this, when the Quran speaks to us, please, take it seriously. Take it to heart. It is Allah who protects. It's Allah who blesses. And yes, it is Allah who punishes. And some punishment could come sooner than we think. Because some of us may think that punishment and reward are exclusive in the hereafter. So here, I do all what I want. Yes, you do all what you want, but you cannot tell Allah, don't punish me here. Or don't punish me much. You can ask for forgiveness. You can repent, definitely. And Allah's doors are always open. But don't think that you control when or what punishment Allah applies to somebody's condition. And that's why we are prohibited from judging anybody. Saying, this person is going to hell. This person, mashallah, is going to paradise. We don't know. قُلْ لَا أَدْرِي مَا يُفْعَلُ بِي وَلَا بِكُمْ I don't know, the Prophet is told to say in the Quran, I don't know what's going to happen to me or you. 
he is instructed to tell us and to tell his community ولو كنت اعلم الغيبه لاستكثرت من الخير وما مسني السوء so he doesn't know the unknown let us not be presumptuous when it comes to allah doing or not doing certain things let us not judge each other that somebody is going to go to paradise or hellfire may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us all to paradise so allah has crafted a path for you and the path is part of your deen lakum shara lakum min ad-deen so the deen which is al islam that was given to nuh ibrahim musa isa and other prophets and finally prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the faith is one but the sharia could be different sharia here means law okay so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al-maida tells us likullin ja'alna minkum shir'atan wa minhaja for every community of yours we have established a path and a methodology a way of life what is our way of life if you want to learn it read the quran read the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that which we have revealed to you walladhi awhayna ilayk wama wassayna bihi nuhan and that which we have admonished nu to follow wama wassayna bihi ibrahim wa musa wa isa all of these prophets are admonished to follow the straight path what is the straight path an aqimu ad-din wa la tatafarraqu fihi establish religion and don't set wedges to divide you don't dispute even in the guidance that Allah has given you you see muslims are blessed to have Allah as the one and only ilah to follow and to worship and to obey and to submit to so they are free from the effect of all other small g gods they are free and that's intended but then when it comes to being united around ilah wahid nabi wahid one prophet one messenger one book we read the book and we focus on dividing our communities and our nations by one of two ways either that we follow our whims which can never be unite uniting factor or by disputing what it means so allah resolved for us the two issues he says do not follow your whims ولا تتبع الهوى فيضلك عن سبيل الله don't you follow your whims lest it may mislead you astray away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the treatment for following our whims as far as disputing what it means the resolution in the Quran is if you dispute any matter take it back to the scholars who can figure it out for you and if i am not a scholar which i am not i go to other scholars and ask them what i don't understand and if you think that the quran is finished and the tafsir are finished and everything now is clear think again because while the text is there but issues keep coming up and when new issues come you need the collective ijtihad of the muslim scholars you need the consensus of muslim scholars to guide the ummah and that's why matters of public interest and public impact they are not supposed to be addressed by a single scholar's opinion they have to be decided through 
a council of scholars because it's more difficult to deviate when you have a group of scholars around you. So, but a lay person who is not specialized can ask any scholar that he or she trusts and take whatever they tell him and don't dispute it, don't argue about it. The responsibility is on the scholar who is advising you. This is the rule of how to deal with Sharia. So when Allah says, establish the deen and do not dispute thereof, He wants us to be united around His Sharia, to be united around His words, to be united around the references He pointed us to go to, the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So as we see here, in ayah number 13, Sharia does matter. And don't you be disappointed or disheartened when people who don't know the Islamophobes and their likes attack Sharia and make a political campaign around Sharia. Sharia is invading America. Sharia is this, Sharia is that. Whenever you meet somebody who speaks like this, tell them, listen, the most renowned rabbis of all times, from the beginning of the Jewish history until today, named Maimonides, Musa ibn Maimun, he wrote a whole book about Sharia, and he wrote it in Arabic because he was the teacher of rabbis in the Middle East when he was in Spain. He was their teacher. They referred to him for judgment. His book is The Guidance to the Perplexed, or Hidayat al-Hayara, or Hidayat al-Hayirin, is a very marvelous account of Jewish rabbis learning what Sharia of Allah is in Arabic by the leading rabbi of all history. There is not a single rabbi who's worth the title who doesn't know Maimonides or Musa ibn Maimun. So tell them, read that book. It's not written by a Muslim. It's written by a Jewish rabbi who submitted to Allah and believed in Allah without any blemish. So at his time, he was a Muslim rabbi. So we need not to be shy, pushing against false allegations, intimidations, and false tactics that want to silence us. You are the people of Sharia. You dress jilbab, your wife dresses hijab, you want to force sharia on us, don't be intimidated by all of this. Just explain to them that sharia is a way of life and it comes in the books of all the prophets, including the list I gave you. Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad, the five major prophets of all times. Also, it behooves us, it is incumbent on us, it is important for us to submit to the Sharia, to submit fully to the Quran without hesitation. In Surah An-Nisa, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Fala wa Rabbika la yu'minun hatta yuhakkimuka fi ma shajar bainahum." ثم لا يجد في أنفسهم حرجا مما قضيت ويسلموا تسليما. Nay, by your Lord, they are never going to reach the level of faith they are required until they take your judgment in matters they dispute and they accept your judgment with submission without hesitation. These are the words of the ayah. Submission without hesitation, 
not only that, but without any negative feeling even in their heart. ثم لا يجد في أنفسهم حرجة. There is no tight chest feeling. Oh, I have to do this. Oh, is this really? No, I thought this. No argument. Full submission. No hesitation. No reluctance. This level of love is expected of us Muslims when it comes to the listening, the obedience, and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our heart for his guidance and make faith lovely in our heart. Allahumma habib ilayna al-iman wa zayyinhu fi qulubina wa karrih ilayna al-kufra wal-fusuqa wal-asyan wa jalna min al-rashidin fadlan minka wa ni'ma. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحابته ومن اتبع سنته بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم بفضلك يا أرحم الراحمين So in the same ayah establish the deen and do not dispute anything therein then it comes and says, كَبُرَ عَلَى الْمُشْرِكِينَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ It is something the mushrikeen saw as too much. It's too much. This man claiming to be a prophet, he grew up in our village. We knew him as a child. So they raise an issue and they say, why didn't Allah send this revelation to someone great amongst us, this village? لَوْلَا أُنزِلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ عَلَىٰ رَجُلٍ مِنَ الْقَرْيَتَيْنِ عَظِيمٍ Why do you send the revelation, O oh Allah, on an orphan? Because in their culture, an orphan is less than a full person. It is the same way some societies look at those who are different as less. The same concept. And the reason the ayah points, kabura, it is their arrogance. They think they are better, exactly like Iblis. He said, ana khayrum min. I am better than this one. The one you created, Adam, Iblis says, I am better than he is. And his false logic is, you created me from fire, but you created him from dust. Who told you that fire is bigger or better than dust or vice versa? Allah is the one who places values to things. He is the one who is great, and he is the one who decides what is great in his creation. Not us, we are creation like others. So, kabur ala al mushrikeen. I don't be, I, wanna, I don't want to be extreme to say, kabur ala al muslimin an yattabi'u kitabahum. Muslims feel that they are too big to follow this 1400 year old book. But unfortunately, this is part of our reality that we aspire to change. We want this generation to be the generation that divides history, the future, which is Islam, from the past, which is Jahiliyyah, living through ignorance. We want our generation to be the last generation to be ever occupied by other forces, to be ever exploited by tyrants or foreign powers, to be ever exploited by our own desires and the shaitan, to never be exploited by all the gifts that Allah has given us, spouses, children, money, positions, power, self-esteem, all of these arrogant elements and foundations 
should be suppressed completely. I am not more than any other human being. I am not less than any other human being. The only difference between me and everybody else is whoever is more mindful of Allah. Inna akramakum indallahi atqakum. The most honored among you in the sight of Allah is one who is most mindful and most frequently obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the issue that we need to appreciate in each other. Not the money we have, not the wealth we have collected, not the number of children, not the positions we occupy, not the neighborhood we grew up in, not the degrees that we hang on the walls, not the bank accounts, none of that matters. What matters for this life and for the hereafter is Allah's judgment. How does he judge? The Prophet ﷺ explains, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ صُوَرِكُمْ وَأَشْكَالِكُمْ وَلَاكِ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ Allah doesn't care to look at your shapes, your colors, your position, your power, whatever. But he cares to look at your heart where the intention and the conscience is and to look at your deeds. Do they match your intention or is your intention behind or ahead of your actions? So we should focus on our intentions and our actions and reform the two by learning our book, reading the Quran, getting closer to, to Allah every day, even if it is one verse every day, it will make a difference one day. So, كَبُرَ عَلَى الْمُشْرِكِينَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ It appeared too much for the mushrikeen what you are inviting them to follow. Then Allah says, concluding the ayah, اللَّهُ يَجْتَبِي إِلَيْهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَهْدِي إِلَيْهِ مَنْ يُنِيبُ Allah gets closer the one he wills and he guides to himself the ones who go back to Allah. الأوابين, those who return back to Allah. Even after they have sinned, come back. After they have committed all the sins in the world, come back. Allah opened his doors for mercy every single day. In the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَبْسُطُ يَدَهُ بِاللَّيْلِ لِيَتُوبَ مُسِيءُ النَّهَارِ وَيَبْسُطُ يَدَهُ بِالنَّهَارِ لِيَتُوبَ مُسِيءُ اللَّيْلِ حَتَّى تَطْلُعَ الشَّمْسُ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extends his hand of mercy and forgiveness for people who have sinned at night to seek forgiveness in the day. And to people who sinned in the day to seek forgiveness at night. And that goes on every day until the day of judgment, until the sun rises from the west. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our heart to his book. Allahumma habib ilayna al-iman wa zayyinhu fi qulubina wa karrih ilayna al-kufra wal-fusuqa wal-asyan wa jalna min al-rashidina fadlan minka wa ni'ma. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt. وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا وإذا أردت بقومنا فتنة فنجنا منها يا مولانا غير خزايا ولا مفتونين ولا مبدلين ولا مغيرين Brothers and sisters, a couple of days ago the, the chairman of the council of fatwa in Ethiopia Sheikh Adam Ahmed Tulla has passed away. 
110 years of service of Islam, about 80 or 90 years of his service, leading scholar, very, very great reference, not only for lay people, but for Muslim scholars throughout Ethiopia, and a great man of humility who has united the Muslims in Ethiopia for all his life. Whenever there was a dispute, he was the one they went to. Whenever there is a difficult question, a difficult fatwa, they went back to him. This is a third scholar to die in the past few weeks. After Sheikh Al Qaradawi, Allah Rahamu, and Sheikh uh, Usama Abdul Azim. And that reminds us of the serious need that we groom and grow the next generation of scholars of that level and caliber. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul and accept him into his merciful hand. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فستذكرون ما أقول لكم وأفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد وأقم الصلاة